Welcome back to the show. This is still GH Today here on GH1 TV. It's now time for the breakfast with you. My guests are seated. This morning I've been joined by Dr. Ezekiel Ejikumo Bing. He's a member of the NPP communications team and Malik Basantale. He's a deputy national communications officer for the NDC. We are waiting for the chief, uh, Bernard Mona. Uh, he will join us soon. But good morning to you, gentlemen. Good to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> you are what? Um, Anyway, I, I, you, well, we, we know there's a, there's a test day, it was supposed to be a part three. Uh -huh. uh, last week, uh -huh. last two weeks we met uh -huh. and then we did part one, part two. Uh -huh. And uh, myself and my very good brother, uh -huh. Honorable Chinia, uh -huh. were supposed to meet again for a part three. Uh -huh. And uh, so I came, he, he asked that we should bring uh -huh. his land documents, government lands he had acquired government vehicles he had acquired, how he smuggled fertilizer and That's all of that. That's a huge stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought every document. I was ready for it. Uh, okay. Doc is my very good friend. I, 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 I wish our cameras yes. can capture the, the documents. My documents. So that I came, I came. People will have a, an appreciation of yeah, how, yeah. how huge that came, stack is. I came with all his government lands he acquired, government vehicles, how fertilizer is smuggled. All those things, they are here. And I was going to prove everything to him. But I don't know. But don't worry. I know how to get but, him. But, but, I mean, he... I didn't know. I, they said he, he's traveled. He said he... He, he was not on the show. I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I, he I'm, was not I'm, on the I'm show. Really, he, really, he was not built uh, Yeah, I'm really, 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 really surprised. But, I mean, um, I, I still know where I would... Go. Maybe you can, you can meet yeah, him we'll find, his yeah, yeah, I'll go there. I'll go okay. there. It's okay. very important. It's okay. very important. Okay, because anyway. Two days okay. ago, you know... You know, I, I don't say, oh. you know, you know. Two days ago, I, I, he was on another platform mm -hmm. speaking about the 24 hour economy, mm. and he kept saying, "Look, we don't, we've not even met local demand, and we want to think of export and all mm. of that." And I was like, uh, "But oh, Chinia, you should know more about export." In 2019, the Greek minister said people were smuggling fertilizer mm. on the backs of donkeys, and it was Chinia in his constituency who was carrying okay. plenty of food and job fertilizer to Cote d'Ivoire. So mm. you are a master of exporting fertilizer, even though there was local demand. So, I mean, we had a lot to do today, but um, I'll hold on to the documents and then we'll meet again. Absolutely. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure on another date. But um, a number of issues we'll discuss yeah, this morning. The, the, rule of, the rule of natural justice mm -hmm. should at least permit Honorable Chinia to be heard. Exactly. Copious, yeah, that's right. He was copious, copious, that's why we... we, 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 we all yeah. had... And you remember yesterday, the president launched the district the road drip. improvement program, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I believe is very thoughtful quite innovative mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. government is doing a lot in terms of road construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We continue to boast that in this current fourth republic, no administration has constructed, reconstructed, maintained, rehabilitated all the words and the synonyms you could use mm -hmm. to um, suggest road improvement and connectivity. I mean, in the history of this fourth republic than this current administration. Beyond the construction we've done, government is also seeking to make sure that there is interconnectivity within our, um, our district. So mm. government brought up the idea every district is going to have a set of construction mm -hmm. um, equipment <coughs> that would help improve greatly um, the road access within the district and the communities. As, as a doctor, one of the delays that contribute, for example, to Maternal mortality, mortality yeah. is that yeah. if you are diagnosed of, for example, <laughs> having prolonged labor yeah. and you would need surgical intervention mm -hmm. and the particular facility, be it a compound or health center or polyclinic, is not having a theater service, you need to be at least um, transported to the nearest facility that has um, theater service. And if the road is bad, you can, you, you can guess the delay that can be occasioned and the effects on the mother mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. baby. So if you have such intervention, personally, um, as a doctor, I'm quite pleased with that and what it portends to the health sector vis-a-vis -vis interconnectivity from facility to facility to help improve the outcomes of emergency conditions in particular. Mm -hmm. So we love the government, we applaud the government and we, we pray that at the district level, all stakeholders and interested persons... But, but, but why now? The it's, it had been on the table since last year, and you need to go through procurement um, processes, and of course the, the 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 buying of the machines would take time, clearing would take time, and all that. And government purse is always tight, so government has an eye on each and every sector. So at least better 
late than never, at least from now. If we are able to take care of it for years to come, we can imagine the improvements that it will bring at the district level. One of the comments made mm. by the Chamber of Construction Industry is where the MMDAs will get the mm. funds to maintain these mm. heavy-duty equipments. You know, in Ghana, it's, it's beautiful when we get things, but the maintenance culture is a very, very critical problem. One of the, the questions on the minds of the people who are in the industry is, is this. Yeah, so government has taken notice of all that mm. and has planned accordingly. Mm. Accordingly, For the first two years, we have manufacturer's warranty. So the manufacturer would set up regional offices to maintain mm -hmm. the, the machines. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, government is partnering with the private sector to oversee the um, maintenance of, mm -hmm. of this machine. Government is not going to give it to the district to burden them in terms of monies and finances to maintain um, the equipment. It's mm -hmm. centrally um, located. So we have a private sector that would come in, that would ensure that the machine is, is put to good use and of course is maintained as and when it needs to, is repaired when they need be and all that. And beyond that, government um, has taken the pains to train at least three persons per equipment. Three persons per equipment. So if you are trained, you know how to use it. You know how to at least start some first aid, in quote, services on those machines. Then at least we can speak to the longevity and proper usage of those machines. So yes, we understand the concerns. Mm -hmm. But government has taken notice of all government interventions mm -hmm. that has suffered some maintenance issues and all that and has planned accordingly vis-a-vis -vis the partnering with the uh, private sector to oversee the maintenance and repairs of those equipment. So mm. yes, all fears should be allayed. That's indeed government thought um, ahead to, to make provisions for that. Okay, okay. Um, the flag bearers of the leading parties, that's the NPB and NDC, are out there on campaign grounds. And uh, there are a number of things they've said, particularly in regards to your flag bearer who says that, well, Ghanaians do not want a second hand president. What's, what's your thoughts on that? Um, Good morning once again, mm. and we, we feel to even greet ourselves, Malik, mm. and, and our good viewers who, mm. who have joined us. And a very special good morning to the President, His Excellency, and our flag bearer, the Vice President mm. of the Republic. Clearly, he's been in the northern part of the country for the past three to four weeks, canvassing for support, telling people what he wants to do, mm. the next chapter of the country, the bold solutions he suggested to help improve our lots mm. as, as Ghanaians. And, to offer some relief to our everyday problems and the ones that we encounter day in, day out. Mm. And he's made an emphatic statement, as your introductory message said. I mean, clearly, the fight is, is between his, himself and his senior brother, uh, Mr. John Draman, and Muhammad mm. Sessel, the former president. And we've had the benefit of experiencing a former president and what he did. I mm -hmm. mean, in just to use three sentences to, to describe his tenure, he's been tried. He failed and he was rejected by Ghanaians on two occasions. Mm -hmm. Certain someone wanted records at the first sitting president to lose elections, coming back again. Another one wanted record to be the first former president to lose an election as well in our country. And we've seen how he ruled us and what he did, the abysmal performance that occasioned his presidency and his administration, and what we've experienced. And at least the two of them have had the benefits of occupying one of the highest seats in the country with mm. the vice presidency. Dr. Baumia has had the opportunity to meet with Ghanaians, look them in their faces, to tell them what he's done as vice president. We've not had the benefit of that from Mr. Mahama. And of course, the solutions that either party is, is proposing, you can clearly tell one that has coherence, the one that addresses the needs of today and make um, provisions for the future to come. And it's, it's clear, who would you go for? Is it one that you've tried, one that has failed, one that has been rejected, or one that has performed creditably mm. in his role as vice president and is proposing ideas that have propensity to making sure that today's needs are taken care of and make provisions um, for tomorrow. One that has learned on the job, one that has, we've seen his, 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 his footprint everywhere across the country and the ideas and the various interventions mm. he's championed as vice president. So clearly, he's made an emphatic call. And for everyone listening, especially the youth, looking at the two, 
mm. which of the two leaders would you trust your future with? Is it the one that came and cancelled your allowance? Is it the one that came and told you, I can't create jobs for you, I'm not a magician? Is it the one that came and promised jobs, hired teachers, and after three years, pay them just three months' salary? Recently, we saw some video resurfacing on our social media and seeing some seniors from the medical school who worked under him for 11 good months without salary. They had to picket at, at the ministries before their salaries were paid. So we can spell out all the ills and the, the, the effects and the trauma we went through as, as Ghanaians when um, former President Mahama was our leader. I mean, what's really described and summed up his administration is the one-term failure the incompetence and the abysmal performance that characterize administration mm. and plunging our country into perpetual darkness under, under his reign. Mm. So clearly, it's, it's a choice between light and day. You go for one that has shown credibility, you go for one that has shown humility mm. and the presence of mind to, to be able to, I mean, control himself, have the emotional intelligence to control himself in terms of adversity, I mean, empathetic leader like Dr. Baumia and one that has also shown that indeed I have what it takes to be a leader and I have the ideas that will push the country forward and I mean propel us into perpetual prosperity. So clearly he's made I mean the call and I believe every Ghanaian irrespective of our background or where we come from we can clearly put the two on the scale to measure them in terms of competence, in terms of credibility, in terms of ideas, mm. in terms of humility, personality and all that and the choice, like I said, a Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. So yes, I mean, it, he made a right call, which I believe you and I, I mean, in, in our sober moments, would mm -hmm. clearly um, give the green light to Dr. Baumia. So yes, we, we encourage Ghanaians to engage with him. He's doing his regional tour. He's engaging with people. He's telling them what he can do and mm -hmm. what he's done and his effects, the solutions he's um, proposing to, to help us. So I believe it's the right call, and he's made an emphatic um, um, call, an emphatic statement on the competence of the two, on the track record of the two, and one that can be But it, it, does, it doesn't lie in his hand. It lies in the thumbs of Ghanaians. If he says Ghanaians do not need... That's why he's telling you mm. that, yes, <laughs> one has been president before. He calls him second-hand president in the sense that mm. you've been there. We've seen you. Mm. So a second-hand... In quote, object is one that but has But the been vice president has also been there as the head of the economic management. An advisory role he played. Mm. <laughs> so, yes. So, he was the driver's mate. He's, he's been mate. Mr. Mm. Mr. Mahama made a similar comment. Mm. After Prof. Mills passed and he took the reins of, of governors, he made a similar comment. Mm. And when he was trying to get the note to become president, he told Ghanaians, give me the steer. I was a spare driver. I mean, even when he was in the seat, formally and constitutionally mandated, sworn into office, he still described himself as, <coughs> as, as a mate. And his chief of staff went to the north and told the good people of Ghana that don't vote for the MPP because the Dr. Baumia, who is campaigning in the north as one of you to be given the opportunity to become president can only be a mate under Namdan Kwekufado. So it's a general perception shared by both parties. Mr. Mahama himself, he's chief of staff, and of course, Dr. Baumia. And he's a vice president. No matter how you look at it, he's a vice president. Mm. If indeed he was occupying any position of presidency for two terms, I don't think he would have come back for re-election. Okay. But he's had the opportunity and the mandate to contest for presidency because, yes, he's indeed a vice president. Mm. He's not running away from any difficulties that has occasioned or this government has, has experienced during his UPSA um, lecture he gave. He spelled out the difficulties we face as a government, the achievements of his boss and the administration in general, the challenges we face. He clearly associated with all that and, of course, to the opportunity to tell Ghanaians what he's done in his capacity, the influences he's had on each and every sector as vice president, for which he said, okay. I've given you my CV, <clears throat> looked at my CV and given me the opportunity to lead. So it's, it's as basic as, uh, as it can be. Okay, Malik. Good morning. Good morning once again. And good morning to my brother. Mm -hmm. First of all, I think it's high time we told Alaj Baumia that presidency is serious business. To be president of the Republic of Ghana, mm. <clears throat> you need to be serious you need to be focused, and you need to come around with a certain gravitas mm -hmm. so that more than 30 million Ghanaians 
will feel proud calling you their president. Yesterday, I listened to <coughs> Dr. Tony Edu. And in fact, I listened to one of their founding members, mm -hmm. Dr. Nyahu Nyahu mm -hmm. who said, we need to, for once, sit Alaji Baumia down and tell him that, sir, what you are contesting for is bigger than what may be in your mind mm. that you want. You are going to become, or you are aspiring to become the president and commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Mm -hmm. Enough of the jokes, enough of the playful acts on panel, on stage, and all of that. Throughout this campaign, mm -hmm. Baumia has three messages. Anywhere he goes, he first says, vote for me because I'm a Muslim. He says, vote for me because I am a Nordner. And he says, vote for me because I can do eight years. What sort of warped message is this? So of all the crises you and I find ourselves in, Spare part dealers are crying. NAPCO trainees are crying. Unemployed teacher trainees are crying. Nursing trainees are crying. Including doctors are struggling for, their, for salaries. Cost of living is high in this country. We cannot buy petrol. We cannot pay electricity tariffs. Water prices are high. Food commodities. Inflation is skyrocketing. Come to the dollar. And you think that the panacea to these problems, and these problems we Ghanaian people find ourselves in, mm. is that one, you are a Muslim, you are a Malam, two, you are a Nordner, mm. and three, that he can do eight years. Look, let us advise him. Yesterday, and I listened to him say, we cannot have a second-hand president. Lily, whether second-hand, mm -hmm. whether Bruni Wau, whether Fools Bale, mm. it is better than a liar. Anybody, my mother used to say that, Always avoid liars in your life. And Dr. Baumia, you are known to be a chronic liar. In recent past, everything you have promised, you have lied. Mm. Even today, the things you say on platforms, you lie. Your own president. You went to who, um, Cape Coast and promised them a hammer. When Mr. Kufwado got there and they asked him, he said he never had it in their manifesto. So indirectly, Akufuado called his own vice president a liar. Baumia went to Yendi. He promised Yana an agricultural university. He promised Yana an airstrip. Till date, not a block has been sent there. He lied. He went to Savulugu. And in recent time, when he was campaigning, the Savulugu, Yona told him, he said, Mr. Man, you came here promising all sorts of things. You said you're going to give us an agric university, convert the pond tamale. You're going to construct the Wale Wale to Savulugu Road. He said, what has happened? Baumia was looking at him, scratching his head. And Yona said, look, look, you cannot, such a character cannot come back here promising me juicy things. Go back and fulfill your promises. He went to Techiman, met nursing trainees, stood on the podium. We have paid your alawa. Nobody owes again. Mahama cancelled it. And a young nurse of about 18 years stood up and said, sir, you are the age of my father. But if you lie, I'll tell you you've lied. Please, I have not received alawa for three years of being in this institution. They haven't paid me alawa. But Mia looked at her and rubbed the head and sweat. Stood up and finally told the young lady, eh, I didn't know. I, I need to ask the finance minister. Really? He does not have an appreciation of things we have in this country. Look, President Mahama, you can decide to tell him as a second-hand uh, 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 president or whatever. But that second-hand president sold petrol at 13 cities a gallon. We appreciate it. We thank our second-hand president. That second-hand president changed the dollar at 4 CD, 20 pesos. Thank you very much, second-hand president. That second-hand president was able to sell an Olonka of Gare for eight Ghana cities. We thank you, Mr. President. That president was able to regularize and solve Dumso in 2016 by bringing power batches. And I keep saying that in 2007, when Dumso first befell this country, you know the solution of the MPP? They went to Suhum, Apedra, Community One, and took pastors to Akosomo. Lily, you remember? You are a renowned journalist. They went and placed their hands on the Akosomo Dam, that they are praying for it. When President Mama came, he said, Dumso is not a spiritual problem. Dumso is not caused by dwarfs and, and jeans. Dumso is a technical one. He had to go and bring car power, 250 megawatts. He brought Ameri, 250 megawatts, and beefed up power generation in this country to over 5,000 megawatts. Today, you, the MPP, even cry and say there's excess power. If you don't have available power, will you have excess power? So that was what we did in resolving it. 
And today you tell such a man as a second-hand man. Look, we thank him very much. But we want to tell Baum here that this thing of always going around mm -hmm. and saying that he's never been president, he's never been president. I, I, I get surprised. There is only a myth. Take the Constitution. Go to Article 68. It clearly says that in the absence of the president, the vice president assumes office. Now, today, I would let you all understand that of all the times Baumia acted as president in this country, he engaged in gargantuan corruption. Number one, on the 30th July 2018, and the document is here, 30th July 2018, Nanado traveled to the ECOWAS assembly. Mm. They were to elect an ECOWAS president. 30th July, note it. On that same day, mm. parliament was rising. And so they needed to present the Ameri innovation deal. You remember when they went to renegotiate and all of that? That deal was supposed to be 510 million. The day they were presenting it, Nanado was out of town. Baumia was acting as president in this country. When they brought the deal to Baumia, he looked at it and said 510 million is too small. They ballooned it from 510 to 1.3 billion and presented it to parliament. When parliament caught them red handed and said, look, this Ameri deal has been ballooned. It's been increased. This is not what President Mahama signed. <coughs> <coughs> Baumia came out. I'm, I'm struggling with my throat a bit don't, don't because worry. I worked it, in Tamale. The, the, Baumia, absolutely. Baumia came and sat down and was totally embarrassed from attempt, for attempting to smuggle over 800 million in addition to 510, making it 1.3. That was when Baumia acted as president. That's one. Number two, Nanado traveled to go and watch a UEFA Champions League match in Liverpool, mm -hmm. in Madrid, sorry, between Liverpool and Tottenham Hospice. Nanado left this country on the, on, in July 2019, on the 19th of July, to go and watch the match. Mm -hmm. Baumia acted as president. Immediately, Baumia took over as president. He conveyed a meeting, asked them to bring all the PDS regulations. <clears throat> they ballooned, they sat down and first, Baumia changed a condition subsequent president to a condition subsequent. He asked them to change the documents from a bank guarantee to an insurance guarantee. Mm. And they presented fraudulent documents to government of Ghana. That was the doing of Baumia. The FTR report on this particular deal said that that particular meeting was chaired by Baumia because by then Nanado was out and Baumia took over as president. They attempted duping this country to a tune of $190 million dollars. They were stripped naked. In fact, as for this one, it didn't even take the minority. Mm -hmm. Their own minister at the time, Amewu, was the one who said the documents they presented were fraudulent. And that was the doing of this alleged bomb here. Just taking over office as president for just two days, he attempted duping the people of this country. Number three, Nanado traveled to Uganda. And in fact, in that particular trip, he was going to Belgium and Uganda. That was when they had a private jet for 20,000 pounds an hour, if you remember. When Nanado left this country, Baumia started acting as president. Immediately, Baumia assumed office as president. On that same day, in, that was in September, he issued that they write a letter to the port because he had heard that a, a certain businessman had imported 10,000 bags of lily rice from Thailand. They siphoned this rice from the contractor, took it, seized it, and shared the rice as salary rice. This was Baumia as president. He took the office of the special prosecutor to start investigation into this matter. And when investigation had gone deep, Baumia's office said they knew nothing about it. It was his administrator called Kekose who had engaged in this corruption. Meanwhile, that was when you took over presidency for just one day. All these instances were when Baumia took over presidency for one day, and this corrupt deal started coming. Number four, Charles Edouboye told us that before you even sit near Baumia, any time he takes over office as president, you need to pay $250,000. And his own Charles Edouboye said, Baumia now knows much about corrupt concessions and how to give concessions to Galamseyes to the extent that you must pay him all these dubious monies before you go and get a concession site. That was again when Baumia took over as office. So in these four instances, any time Nanado was out of the country and Baumia assumed office as president for just two days, there was a corrupt scandal on him. If such a character. But, but you know, the, today, OS, the OSP uncovered that Baumia was not aware Charles Edouard was. It's not true. In the letter, the OSP said Baumia's corruption was so big mm. that we needed to now pass a Corrupt Practices Act and that mm. his office had ended investigation because they did not have jurisdiction.
Mm -hmm. to progress with investigation on the vice president. And the OSP was begging you and I to mm -hmm. pass a corrupt practices act before they're able to investigate Baumia's gargantuan corruption. So, Lily, all mm -hmm. we are saying is that this act of Baumia going around there, mm -hmm. trying to <clears throat> appear as a saint, try to pretend and behave as if it's a new commodity. Please, we know you. I have said that mm -hmm. you can buff a monkey. You can shave the monkey. You mm. can put lip gloss on the monkey. Mm. It will still be a monkey. Baumia mm. is known as a liar. He's known as a highly incredible person. He's known as one who says one thing and does another. He's known as one who goes around peddling falsehood. And he has never been truthful to even himself. Not to talk of being truthful to the Ghanaian mm. people. We are pleading on him. The contest to presidency in 2024 is about policy. Mm. President Mahama has gone out there. He's professed policy solutions. In Tamale, when you listen to the shop, Many people even thought it was a manifesto launch. President Mama has spoken about the 24-hour economy. That seeks to create sustainable jobs for the Ghanaian youth, mm -hmm. boost productivity, grow our GDP rates, and move us into an export gear. Mm -hmm. That's good news for this country. President Mama has spoken about building mining refineries and mining communities. Never in the history of this country have we thought that way. President Mama says he would do it for Ghanaian communities. President Mama has spoken about building refineries in cocoa growing areas. Mm -hmm. The cocoa growing communities are happy about this because they want to see their raw cocoa being processed into finished commodities for them to also but, get but value didn't, in this country. But uh, uh, so President I mean, Mama think about this when he was president? He did. Mm. He did. But you see, where we found ourselves then mm. is not where we find ourselves in today. Mm -hmm. By then, a gallon of petrol was 13 cities. Mm -hmm. Today, a gallon of petrol is going for 75 cities. At mm -hmm. the point, it was 100 cities. What it tells you and I is that we need to reset this country and put it back on track. At the time, why? We had doomed so. President Mahama needed to resolve doomed so. At the time, we were fighting for even an additional oil field. If you remember, mm -hmm. in 2016, we won the case and that oil field came back on board. At the time, there were petty crises President Mahama was stabilizing. And he did it remarkably well. And at least, we all know that even with the money President Mahama had, we saw what he did. Why? If at the time President Mahama thought of building hospitals in this country, he did. Mm. He built the Ridge Hospital, Bolgatanga Hospital, Tamale Teaching Hospital. If he thought of building factories in this country, he did. He built the Bipression Alta Factory, the Daboya Smoke Factory, revamped the Commander Sugar Factory, built the Kumasi Shoe Factory. If President Mahama ever thought at that time of even building schools, he did. He built e blocks in Paha Community Day School, Daboya Community Day School, so many e blocks all around, including the Aflawo one. If at that time President Mahama thought of building markets, he did. He built the KJTR market, Kotokraba market, so many markets. If at that time President Mahama thought of building airports, he did. He built the Terminal 3. He built the Tamil International Airport, the whole airport, the Sunyani Airport. If President Mama thought of building interchanges at the time, he did. He built a, a circle interchange, Kaswa interchange, so many interchanges in this country. Mm. If he thought of constructing roads, he did. And that was how come he was termed as the infrastructural king mm. in this country. So now, after all what President Mahama did by then, mm. he thinks that we now have sufficient chances of beginning the 24-hour economy in this country. And that's all what President Mama goes around saying. So we are not interested in going into a banter with Baumia. We already know that Baumia is, yes, Baumia is talented at dancing offbeat. He's talented at looking for a steer everywhere he goes. He says, give me a steer. Children will be shouting, boah ben, boah ben. He'll be playing with them. We are interested in policy. We feel the plights of over 1.8 million unemployed Ghanaian youth. Mm -hmm. And we think that instead of dancing, or holding his tear or misbehaving there, mm. we will go there, we we'll profess solution. And we think that on the back of the solutions we've professed, the Ghanaian people will vote for the nation builder, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, and at least the first female vice president. That's good news to you, Lily. First female vice president. Well, well for, 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 me, for, for me as, 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 as a woman, yes. if we have a woman president, Fantastic. I would be extremely Absolutely. happy. Especially now that we've passed the affirmative Fantastic. action bill. Fantastic. I see joy in your face. It, it'll be done. <laughs> no, it'll no, be done. No, it'll no, be done. No, no, Don't worry, I, it'll I, be done. I, I, that, that, that's why it'll I think I, I support yes, Donald yes, Trump. Yes, yes. I, I am for you Kamala Harris. You like that? I like that. That's fantastic. I like that. Anyway, Doc, I see that when he was he was speaking. My brother has turned out a lot of untruth. Mm. And I, I suppose if we are to judge by his own standards, mm. I don't know if he would call himself a liar. Mr. Mahama didn't build rich hospital. He didn't build Kotokrava market. In your own studios, Star mm. FM, mm. Mr. Dufo, Dr. Dufo, oh. was here. Mm. And he said as finance minister, mm. he signed the, the, the contract for the loan mm. for Kotokrava market, for rich hospital, and a host of other projects. Mm. Mr. Mahama has no hand in Kotokrava market. So Give some credit to the man from Central Region. Who is the Prof Mills? At least <laughs> we've had a man, a professor as such, mm. from Central Region, mm. who has become a president. See. Prof Mills was so magnanimous in us that 
when he completed the, the N1 highway, he told Ghanaians, please, it is not my project. The Millennium Challenge account that's constructed that road, it's not my project. It's President Kufour's project. So he invited mm. President Kufour to the commissioning of the road. I never mentioned N1 here. I'm giving an example. Mm. Uh, so the, if today, after Prof Mills mm. passed, mm -hmm. he held your hand mm. against all us, mm. to the disaffection of other members in your own party, mm -hmm. and made you a vice president, mm. And after him, you took over as president. Mm -hmm. The least you can do for Prof Mills is to credit him with the things he did. Radio Hospital, go to Krabba Market, as my brother is saying. They are all Prof Mills' projects. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mahama has no hand anywhere. Mm -hmm. Are you telling us that Mr. Mahama built Tamale Teaching Hospital? When Tamale Teaching Hospital was training doctors, Mr. Mahama was still an MP or had not even gone to parliament. Are you telling Ghanaians that he built Wagatanda Hospital? It is not true. Mm -hmm. So why do you sit on a platform to tell lies that <laughs> doctors are also trying hard to receive salaries? It is never the case. If there is any government that has been so nothing to doctors, it's this uh, the government. Mm -hmm. The government has signed condition of service, aside the yearly increment in public sector salaries. Mm -hmm. The doctors over the past two years have at least benefited from the condition of service. That comes at the middle of the year, every year in this administration. Doctors are not struggling to receive salaries. The doctors in our recent history who struggled, the junior doctor, house officers, those who had completed school and started working afresh, they worked 11 good months under Mr. Mahama, the competent one, that receiving salaries. It is never the case in this administration. Even when I was a house officer, in a record two and a half months in 2017, I received my salaries. 2015, under Mr. Mahama, doctors worked for 11 months. Today, doctors are receiving free education. Do mm. <laughs> you know you are receiving free education? You can walk from your studios to the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Every doctor receiving training to become a specialist in this country. The Kufuado NPP administration has made schooling free. They don't face school fees. Either fee, either two and the administration were paying fees. The doctors who had car waiver by motivation, President Kufour introduced, Prof Mills continued. Mr. Mahama and the administration came to cancel them. So any doctor, any healthcare worker who is listening to us can judge between the two. The one that came and canceled the allowances. Government owes the nurses. But they are like the nurses to say, allowances delayed, better than allowances canceled. You cancel them. And you are making a U-turn to come and say that when you come, you continue. Can we take you serious? If governance is about seriousness, then one that has occupied the position that you expect some form of seriousness from the person. The person who claimed free SHS should not be implemented on the whimsical promise of a desperate politician stood on a platform, lied to Ghanaians, and said he introduced free SHS. The person who has occupied the position, and we expect some seriousness from him, per the words of my brother, stood on a platform, met journalists, and told them it is the NDC that introduced NHIS from Nkranza and Damongo. But it's not true. It were the community leaders and the community people in conjunction with the Catholic Church that introduced those um, um, health insurance in those communities. It is never true. So if it's about lies, mm. your candidate, who has been a vice president, mm. who has been a president also, stood on a platform and in all seriousness looked in the faces of the people who sell his message and lied to them. Is governance about lies? So if Dr. Baumia has said one or two things that didn't come to pass and your candidate, who has been a president before and is expected to know better to expect her to see the presidency okay, as so a you serious admit, business. You admit it's clear. I have not admitted it. I said if. Fantastic I said if. I use a conditional clause. Okay. I use a conditional clause. Mm. I said if. Mm. I use a conditional clause. So please listen to me. Okay. That indeed, if it's about seriousness and lies, the one who has occupied the position before, mm. expected to know better, coming to lie to us, and you are here repeating the lies. Got the Krabba Market. There's not his project. Ridge Hospital. There's not his project. Doctors are struggling to receive salaries. Meanwhile, under your administration, junior doctors work for three months without getting salaries. And 11 months without getting salaries. Mm. And you talk about certain things the pre 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 Dr. Baumia has promised that didn't come to pass. Ah, in your manifesto, 2012 manifesto, you promised the youth of Ghana that right after university, send your CV to regional resource center that I'm going to build. Mm. And government is going to give you startups to start <laughs> businesses. Government is going to employ you straight away. Mm. How many youth did you set up with those entrepreneur startups? How many youth? He promised you, Lily. He promised you, Media Development Fund. Where is that one million Ghana city seed capital? He promised the people of Western region that I'm going to construct a dual carriage from Accra to Western region. Mm. Where is that?
the people of the chiefs of Savannah came to him at the presidency and begged him, you are one of us, you are from the north, please we beg you, create our own region for us. And he took this administration, led by Nadu Dankwe Kufuadu, to give them a region. I'm talking about roads in the north. I, I used the Wagatanga to Boku Road in 2019. Today, the 117 kilometer road, we've had 70 kilometer aspect of it done under this administration. I'm talking about road in the north. The first interchange ever in the history of the north is the Tamale interchange. We are talking about road, Tatale, Yendi, Tamale, 160 kilometer road. In fact, the Tatale to Yendi aspect of that road had never seen any form of construction in the history of this country. But it took this administration to construct the roads. So we're talking about what? Improvements in the north and what you have brought up there. The hospitals we are building, 28 district hospitals being put up in the north. And what? The phase two, phase three, Tamale, Waridna Hospital, President Kufo started. You couldn't complete within eight years. It took this administration to complete those facilities. There's phase three of Tamale Teaching Hospital, the Bogatanga Teaching Hospital, phase two, all completed with this administration. Even the very project you started in the north, Bwipe, Sola, Tolong, Bimbila, Bamboy, uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed's hometown. All those health projects you started, you couldn't even complete. Mm -hmm. I came to complete them. So if Dr. Baumia is saying that, yes, give me the steer mm -hmm. to become the president, he knows what he's talking about. Talking about Dumso, that you solved Dumso. You didn't solve Dumso. You started bringing the power budgets into the country, mm -hmm. 2014, 2015. But even as of March 2017, we're having Dumso. We knew, and everyone knows, that the problem of our <laughs> challenge in the energy sector was clearly due to finances. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're able to bring in IPPs, take or pay IPPs into the country. But even after bringing those IPPs, were we having light? The problem was crude. We we're not having money to buy crude oil. The Ghanaian knows under whose presidency Ghanaians suffered the worst form of humiliation, which is Mr. Mahama. Mm -hmm. Talking about economic indices. Yes, you are failing to tell Ghanaians where you took the CD from, the percentage of depreciation, <laughs> where you took inflation from, the percentage of increment you added. And we are not running away from the economy. We've had challenges, we've had some, I mean, bad experiences, post-COVID, peak period, the exchange the depreciation, and whatnot, and inflation. But the good thing is that we can see the trend. The good thing is that I can walk to Ghanaians and tell them that when I took the rooms of power, and we were doing ABC under Mr. Mahama. This is what I did my first time. I didn't know about COVID. I didn't know the effect I was going to suffer. But even when we got to the peak of our problems, this is what I've put in place. Mm -hmm. And these are the indications now. Talking about corruption, I don't want to believe at the point. Let's put the two in front of the Ghanaian. And let's ask every Ghanaian, the almost 33 million people we have in Ghana, to point to the two, which of them is corrupt. You are trying so hard to bring Dr. Baumia into the fold of corruption. But every Ghanaian knows he's incorruptible and he will never be corrupt. And right, Dr. Baumia cannot buy rice, really. If Dr. Baumia, it's Salah, after fasting for one month, he needs to go and do donation for people to eat rice. You are telling me Dr. Baumia cannot buy rice. He needs to go and steal people's rice. I can even donate for Dr. Baumia to go and even donate rice for people. Mm. So you are trying so hard to bring Dr. Baumia into the fold of corruption because you've not been able to cleanse yourself of corruption. And you remember the statement of Honorable Martin Amidu, mm. that Mr. Mohammed's administration was so corrupt that he feared that in the next 20 years, no Nordner will be given an opportunity to rule the country because of the bad president Mr. Mahama has set. And you are coming back to come and tell us that he's all of a sudden metamorphosed into a new person. But we've experienced him. All that he's championing today, he promised them. He promised teachers, I'm going to give you accommodation in the 2012 manifesto. Where is it? He promised all that growth processing things you're talking about today. Where are they? He promised the people their jobs. And in the end, he told Ghanaians that it's not much just to create jobs. Remember his minister, Honorable Rashid Pepu. He told Ghanaian youth to go and cut grasses to come and sell by the roadside. And Mr. Mahama himself told us he can't put money in our pockets. All of a sudden, you're a magician to come and create jobs. With your slogan, 24 hour economy, which you can't even explain. People are talking about eating wache at 2 a.m. Others are saying we are going to eat fufu at 3 a.m. Others are saying we are going to rear elephants. Now, NDC, the anchor, or snow farm, to the extent that your 24 hour economy means we are going to rear cattle, we are going to rear elephants, we are going to rear lions, we are going to rear tigers and export them to Pudong. And the total confusion, even within your, your, your sectors. And you are telling now Dr. Bomia is not proposing ideas, they've not heard about the tax amnesty. It's very obvious, pick and choose. They've not heard about the flat rate system at mm -hmm. our ports. Obviously, pick and choose. They've not heard about Dr. Baumia touting that he's coming to treat 
train one million Ghanaian youth in ICT, coding, and whatnot. And if you put the two down, Mr. Digital and Mr. Doolittle, which of them would you believe as a youth to train you in ICT? Dr. Baumia has mentioned reforms at the ports. Dr. Baumia has mentioned free education at the tertiary level for persons with disability. Dr. Baumia has mentioned reforms at the mining sector and he's going to set up the Mineral Development Fund to support miners. Dr. Baumia has mentioned a host of others. If there is any party which is confused and lack credibility, lack messaging, it's Mr. Malik and his party. They can't even explain their own slogan. They're talking about Koko Bo and Kete. And if governance is a serious business, and you've been vice president, you've been president before, and you want to come back and tell Ghanaians, vote for me again to become president, and you are telling us, all I have for you is the Koko Bo and Kete. Kete. Battery cage system. Because set a battery cage system. Give you three chicken. Give you three hen. Let them meet. And let them lay eggs. Come and sell in a packet for us. So if governance is about serious business, then you come and tell us that when you assume office, you are going to remark our WASI papers, and that is a solution you are bringing on board. If governance is about serious business, you won't tell Ghanaians that when I come, I'm going to use local players to play blasters. So when Mohamed Kudus and Pate are shining at the EPO stage, they are not going to be part of Black Stars because what? I'm going to use local players. Indeed, governance is about serious business. Mm. And I totally agree with my brother. It is the reason why when you have a president who has been vice president, who has been a minister, who has been deputy minister, who has been an assemblyman, who has been an MP, with all the experience and the expertise you expect in that person, comes to be president and he fails wantonly and he disrespects the youth at the time he needed a job and money in a pocket, he tells you he's not a magician. If that same person is coming back to tell you, Lily, that I'm going to give you a job, I'm going to put money in your pocket, would you take that person serious? If mm. governance is indeed it's about seriousness. Then you have a former president. Go home only to come and tell the people of Ghana that all I have for you is to legalize Okada. You won't have a former president. Go home, come back, and when he wants power, tell the people in the Zongos that all I have for you is to build more trees for you. Right. So that when you die, when I subject you to abject penury, when you die, when conditions are bad and you die, all I have for you are mortuaries for you to go and enjoy yourself. And please, affirmative action. Mm -hmm. This government has passed the bill. We believe in the power of women, but it is not every woman you need to elect to come and lead you. Really? And yes, and by God's grace, we've mm. seen the handiwork mm. of the running mates of Mr. Mahama, mm. his education minister, mm. and the worst, and the worst form of our educational sector we've experienced this for the public mm. happened under here. You employ teachers for three months, three years, sorry, 36 months. You pay them their three months salary as education minister. You are a mother, Lily. Would you ask your children to pay utility bills at home when they are not working? But Professor Nopo Kwajiman, as education minister, UPSA declaration, 25th March 2015, passed the bill that forced the hands of university students, now public universities, to pay electricity and water bills. Which mother would do that to you? Mm. As education minister, you couldn't provide chalk. And now we have been told that he's going to take care of our health sector should the NDC come back to power. If the person could not provide chalk to teach our children in our basic schools, how can that person provide theater for you to do your cesarean section when you need it? How can that person provide teaching hospitals for you? So clearly, it is not everyone. We understand, we love our mothers, we cherish women, and we want women to go far. But of course, the woman that you need to give an opportunity to, to come and lead us or to become a vice president one day, should be the one that has the credibility, should be the one that has shown with the little position he or she has occupied to show the lead to say that, yes, this person can be trusted. Not the person who held teachers' promotion for four years. Not the person who did not give teachers um, steady leave for four years. Not the person who could not pay the three years teachers worked and only pay them three months. That person who could not provide chalk should not be the person you should vote for to become a vice president. Governance is indeed about serious business. And I totally agree with Malik. So if it's about serious business, and Professor Nopo Kwajiman, as education minister, could not provide chalk, how can she sustain free SHS? If she could not provide chalk, how can she sustain the smart school system? We are giving teachers laptops. We are giving children um, tablets to study. How can she sustain that if she could not provide chalk? And clearly, you can tell. It's once again a choice between light and day. Dr. Baumia, if he tells you that I'm going to occupy the position for eight years, all he's trying to tell you is that after four years, you have the benefit of weighing my performance. I'll come back to you after four years to come and tell you what I've done with my office. Don't go for a person, even when he wanted to be president again, 
told you he's not a magician to create jobs. That person, when you give the opportunity, cannot come back and account for his stewardship. We've tested him, he failed, and he was rejected. So if you have anyone in mind to propose ideas, to help, and to come on board with expertise, with humility, and credibility, it's Dr. Baumia. So my brother can sit here and sing all the song. But when you mm. put Dr. Baumia before the Ghanaian, and we ask the two, which of them has credibility? Which of them would you associate corruption with? The people of Ghana will tell you. And who has policy to guide you for the future? Is it our confirming kitten kitty, goko bone kitten kitty, fufu at 2 a.m., and what not, remarking of wasi papers, using what, local blasters players? Is that what you call policy? But Tabamia is proposing policies that will meet the demands of today and propel but us. But is, is, is fufu at 2 a.m. bad? I mean, as a doctor? Oh. I'm sorry, I'm in the at 2 a.m. to go back and sleep. No, I'm, I'm asking, is it bad? Because I, I, I'm asking because I'm very guilty. Are you, are, are you a construction worker? So you've eaten Fufu at 2 a.m.? I've been eating things at 2 a.m. You see, see the bad influence of the NDC? <laughs> well, Look at you eat Fufu no, 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 at 2 a.m. This is not, a, this if, is not if, an NDC if, thing. If the construction worker, <laughs> if the construction worker is not going to carry... Is, is, is you, 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 you eat it is at, at 2 a.m.? Yes, I can. Yes, I, you can't buy Fufu at all. We are talking about... Non-communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. Recently, we've been discussing dialysis mm -hmm. and renal mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. And you know the chief corporate of renal diseases? Hypertension, diabetes, and Lily, you are following Malik to eat fufu no, at 2 a.m. Uh, so I was asking... So you go and sleep, no, so wake I, up at I, 5, I and come back to work. As a medical doctor, is yes, it bad? It's, it is very bad. There's mm -hmm. no healthcare worker who would encourage you to eat fufu at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Even though they are saying we shouldn't even eat bankun to this team, mm -hmm. even during the day. And Lily will wake up at 2 a.m. to go and eat fufu. Oh, but when I'm craving you, you, it, you, 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 you don't fear diabetes at all. <laughs> you don't fear hypertension. You don't fear kidney disease. So if you that, don't take care, you. that's why you need to vote the Kufuado. Oh, to really? sustain the free dialysis program mm -hmm. and to make it free for everyone in the near future. If you are eating fufu at 2 a.m., <laughs> if Felix anyway. and Malik that, that, that are influencing you to way. eat fufu <laughs> at 2 a.m., <laughs> then clearly it's a bad habit. Okay, Lily, anyway. First of all, this is a story. Mm. In 2014, mm. October 23rd, mm -hmm. it says President Mahama is set to cut short mm. for the construction mm. of the Kutukraba market mm. in Cape Coast. 2014. Mm. Who was president by then? President Mahama. Was Atame was president in 2014? Oh, no. do you credit I beg your pardon, please, please, please. Respect, respect, respectfully. Atame was, was he president in 2014? No. Mm. Even if it was the project of Atame mm -hmm. is Atame MPP? No. Is Atamel CPP? Atamel is NDC. So since when did you start banking your hopes on the backs of projects of our former president? Is it because Napo has insulted Kufo and insulted JB Dankwa and insulted former presidents that even and had to come and apologize to even Kufo? Mm. Is it because of that you are also disassociating yourself from Kufo and trying to use Atamel's projects? I mean, we need to rise up above that. You said you guys built district hospitals in Tolong, Bole. Go and ask Bahomia. Does he know where the loan came from? We got the loan from the Rafaelian Bank of Vienna. 89 million euros. Go and ask Bahomia whether if he got such money, he will use it to construct a hospital. When Akufado, by chance, came by little money from the international communities, every day he was flying private jets and enjoying. Mm. When Bahomia went and got little three million from China. The first thing he thought of doing was to appoint his brother, Mumuni Baumia, at the Interior Ministry. Appoint his sister, Larba, as NDA boss CEO. Appoint his wife's father, Mr. Ramadan, as ambassador to Saudi Arabia. Appoint his wife's brother, Abu Ramadan, as deputy, and including many family members, because money had come, and he could pay family people. The national cake was turned into a family cake by Baumia. That was what he thought of doing. Mm. If President Mahama had also decided to do that, would he have built the Tolong Hospital? Would he have built the BP Hospital? Would he have built the Solar Hospital, the Bamboy Hospital, the Somenya Hospital, for you to come and sit today and attempt taking glory off? You spoke about Prof. Jane and said she didn't give people chalks. Mm. Wow. For six years, test books have not been sent to junior high schools. Six years under Napo. Napo was education minister. Napo refused to give junior high schools textbooks, textbooks for them to study. At least without chalk, you can get a book to read. What Napo thought of doing 
was to introduce homosexuality through a curriculum, comprehensive sexuality education. It was Napo to our schools. Our parents, PTAs, had to fight against it. I was one of the people who swore everything that if Napo wants to lead this country into being a Sodom and Gomorrah, I won't stand and allow him to do that. He introduced homosexuality. We boycotted it. Till date, he only said it's been suspended. They want to come back into office so they can bestow homosexuality on the people of this country. And that is the plan of Baumia and Napo in this country. So I prefer they not being chalks, even if it was true. But to that, they that, not that, being that will, that will be unfair to I, Dr. You. Baumia for somebody who is, who is a practicing master. Yeah, that's why I'm surprised, because he's also never even commented on it. He keeps dodging the question. It's ever since Nanado said it was bound to happen. He, he, has, Jazeera, spoken, he has spoken. I mean, they it. keep dodging the question of homosexuality. Mm. When it's put to them, they avoid it in this country. And sometimes I'm surprised about the interest, but I know that Napo has a straight interest in that, and they definitely want to come back and then reintroduce that comprehensive sexuality education. Number three, you said President Mahama lied, and his policies he said he was going to do, he didn't do them. Which policies did he say he was going to do that he didn't do? You sat here, and I showed you things we had done, things President Mahama promised the people of this country and came and did. I recounted a lot of them, I don't want to repeat it. And there was no justification to that. You said President Mahama said he was going to introduce Okada. Oh, really? MPP, you now insult Okada riders. <laughs> you say that is his policy, introducing Okada. It is a very good policy. Look, aside even people sitting on motorbikes to go in short or long distances during traffic, because there is no regulation today, even an Okada rider breaks your windscreen and you cannot even locate him. But if there's proper regulation, you cannot dare ride a motorbike even without a number plate. Because even if you break my windscreen, I would immediately identify you. That is what regulation is about. And that is what President Mahama seeks to bring, legalize it, and regulate it properly in this country. Mm -hmm. They don't understand it because they don't have a policy. He said Bahomia said he was going to recruit one million youth. You came into office. Mm -hmm. Unemployment was 7% in this country. Under your watch, very clueless Vice President Baumia and Head of Economic Management Team, unemployment today is 14.8%. You have doubled it and added 8% to it. And they send you to come and defend this. And you come and say, NDC created unemployment. 14.8%. President Mahama was in office. Banks were working. People who were working in these banks were working. You came and collapsed the banks. A problem that could have been solved with $5 billion. You ended up wasting 25 billion, rendered people unemployed, deceived the Ghanaian people you are going to recruit Napo trainees. Today, sacked all of them, and you've not even paid them for 18 months in this country. And you have the F country to come and speak about people not creating jobs. Go and check your unemployment rather. COVID 19, and I'll keep saying this COVID was good news to Baumia and Nanado. In fact, if they had an opportunity today, they would wish COVID came back. Why? 21 billion was given to them during COVID. The Auditor General said they just sat down, planned as a very corrupt, dubious caucus, shared the money. They went to Adakulu. They said they had bought a house for 15 million, isolation center. They renovated it for 21 million and abandoned it to the mercy of the weather. The finance minister's wife chairs his company, Enterprise Insurance. They said they had issued frontline certificates, insurance certificates to frontline workers. When the Auditor General asked them to even bring a single certificate, they couldn't produce it in this country. The Auditor General said 11 billion was wasted as a result of Chop Chop. No wonder. Mm -hmm. President Akufuado was whining, dining, bathing in the sky, enjoying life. Baumia was holding parties, enjoying life. And life was so good. You see his convoy, his wife's convoy, misbehaving with state property and resources. Look, Ivory Coast. When Ivory Coast got their COVID money, mm -hmm. they decided to go into farming. They farmed with the money they gave to them. Today, we import tomatoes to a tune of 3 billion from Ivory Coast. Niger is a desert. Lily, you know Niger. It's a desert. Can you believe that last year we imported pepper from Niger to a tune of 2.2 billion in this country? And you are not ashamed of such leaders. When they send you, you come and sit and you are drawing a comparison. Corruption. The first president to be labeled the mother serpent of corruption in this country is Akufuado. His own special prosecutor told your president that of all corrupt snakes, mm -hmm. he was the lead corrupt serpent in mm -hmm. this country. Why? 
Was it not Taku Fado with cotton tape, taking brown envelope with two hands? In fact, when they brought the envelope, he did the hand this way, they pulled it back, he sat down. He was salivating for $40,000, Taku Fado. And they went and co corrupted him with that. Why? Isn't it not Taku Fado? Then Yantechi said, when you give three million, you bought everything, and Taku Fado was in his pocket. This is Yantechi, president of Ghana Football Association. Former a president. big man, former president, sorry. A big man. Said me and Akufado, this is how we do deals. He said, Baumia, when you give Baumia $2 million, he will laugh, ah, the head will shake, ah, and you, he will give you all the contracts in this country. Alistair Matthias, ever heard that name before? He was a gold mafia. He was intercepted in a foreign country. When he was caught, he said, me and Akufado, we are friends. This is how we share money among ourselves. And then deals, and all the contracts in this country, we have taken it. Not only does corruption stink at the presidency, at the agencies. I sat on this panel. These documents you see here today, that's the minister's corrupt practices. I sat here the last time, and I exposed the minister of how they attempted capturing the country. You, you are a doctor. I mean, the, the people who are chopping are in the offices. You, you are not enjoying Instead of you to tie your cloth to us, they'll push you to come and sit here. And you come and sit and say, President Mama and Kukon Kete Kete, look, farming, I'm an ordinary. I appreciate farming. And I'm where I am today because my forefathers, they farmed chicken, they farmed millet, they farmed corn. If you've never gone to the north, let me take you through. If we had progressed with the farming of chicken, the farming of corn, the farming of millet, we wouldn't have been importing chicken to a tune of five billion in this country. Go to the port and see how chicken, frozen chicken, that has stayed over 10 years abroad, is imported into this country for you and I to go and chop. And you don't see the need, the sense in it, that we need to start growing our local chicken in this country. President Mahama attempted it, even in 2016. Set up a big poultry farm in Bole. Go and look at it. At least, we've started, we are getting somewhere. Price of X, a crate of X today, is about 60, 70 Ghana cities. Why? Because they are not even chicken to even lay them. Food, feed for the pottery, the little pottery we have, is so expensive that we cannot even buy. This is an appreciation of the reality in this country. He spoke about Bahamia saying flat rate. Your vice president today, what stops you from doing it? What, what stops you? You are head of economic management team. You impose taxes on importers and exporters. Today, a container that we used to import for 40,000, mm -hmm. they import it for 2 billion. And you sit here and you think it's a laughing matter. It's politics because talk is the only tax-free commodity in this country. So when you get a chance, this one said this, that one said this. This is the reality. When importers asked Baumia how he was going to solve it, he said, vote for me. When I come, I'll clear E-Levy I brought. E-Levy you brought, Baumia. You are telling us you clear it. Such a liar, such a character, wants to be vice president in this country. Look, okay. the day Baumia becomes president will be the day you will see Ghana weeping, mm. clearly. And it will be the day that we will ever regret everything. You spoke about people losing election. If there's any man who's lost the greatest election in this country, it mm. is Nanado. But you see, me, when people lose election, I don't tease them. The reason is that God has plans for everyone. Why? In 98, but Nanado contested Kofor in their primaries. He lost woefully. Mm. He came back again in 2008. We defeated him. He was minister. Ghanaians judged him on his record and voted against him. 2012, he came back with this Baumia. He lost. If in 2016, God decided to give him power so Ghanaians, we could test at least, distinguish between water and alcohol. Mm -hmm. How does that become a crime? That if someone loses election, he should be rejected, he shouldn't be brought back. Then Nanado would have never come near presidency again. Mm -hmm. All we are saying is that, look, let us meet the people halfway. Ghanaians are struggling. Lily, I swear that this morning, Somebody is looking for breakfast to eat, common breakfast. And it's very difficult for the person. Mm -hmm. Somebody's salary has already been consumed. Sometimes I look at people who even take 2,000 cities. 2,000 used to be big money. Today, it is no money. People take 2,000 and by half of the month, they have exhausted all in transport fares. What used to be dropping fares in 2016 today is trot trot fares from Medina to Accra. Mm -hmm. Those days when you take drop, you pay 15 cities, no be so. Today, Medina to Accra is almost 20 cities. And if you pay 20 cities for one week, how much have you spent out of 2,000 Ghana cities? If you feed and buy light, how much? The youth of this country are suffering. Even the employed are suffering. How much more the unemployed? So okay. when we get opportunities okay, like this, my brother, you, you are a young I, I, I'll, man. I'll, I'll, I'll take a break people. here. Let us uh, educate. You, no, uh, you are done two, 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 two bites. Two this is my two, two slots. slots. So, so, so we'll, 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 we'll move on to another topic. We are a young man. When we get chances like this, let me take a quick break here. When I return, 
who, who, who have had uh, Skashingo on the Attorney General heading to the Supreme Court after to forcing and Richard Jekba were acquitted and discharged by the Court of Appeal. We are back shortly. Welcome back to the show. This is still GH today here on GH1 TV. Still the breakfast review. A while ago, we spoke about both the uh, leading candidates for the major uh, political parties, the NPP and the NDC. Let's head to the courts. Uh, the Attorney General, Godfrey Yeboadame, says he's heading to the Supreme Court after the Court of Appeal acquitted and discharged uh, the, the two main men in the ambulance trial. That's uh, Dr. Casey Olatoforsing and Richard Jaffa, businessman. Uh, since I ended with you, Malik, uh, let me start with you. I mean, my joy is that mm. <clears throat> fairness has been brought mm. from 2019. Mm. We've been accusing a wrong person, mm -hmm. an innocent man, attacking him, he's been vilified, mm -hmm. called him all sorts of names. There are people who swore every oracle that are to force him to go to jail, and all sorts of things. I mean, the man simply said, your government is clueless about even the, even the procurement processes in this country. Mm -hmm. And you don't understand it. I was deputy finance minister. The fact that I issue a certificate does not mean that I should even go there and expect whether the things were brought or not. In other words, nobody builds an ambulance in America and brings it to Ghana. They bring the vehicle. You are a doctor, he knows it. They bring gadgets. And then you build the ambulance when it's already on grounds here. That's how we procure ambulances. Even the ambulances that were brought here, they built them here. You bring the gadgets and everything and then you build it. So, assemble. Assemble it, absolutely. Mm. So it was surprising that they were everywhere. To force him did this, he did that. Me on this matter, I knew justice would be saved. And I knew the Honorable Atu Forsen was innocent. Mm -hmm. And at least we were going to understand the cases. Then but what surprised me was even the phone call between at, uh, uh, Dame and Mr. Japa. You see, the girlfriend Dame, sometimes things that being a local champion means you can always bully your way through and bulldoze your way no matter what it is. You go internationally, you lose cases. You come locally and you want to maneuver and do all sorts of things. At least we now understand how he goes about his cases. We listen to the recording. We saw how he attempted, I mean, luring Jakpa into falsely testifying against Atu Forsen. Mm. And Mr. Jakpa said, no, I have conscience. I believe in God and I believe in fair justice. I will never do anything against my will and against my conscience. What I will do is to testify to the doing of the Lord. And I will do exactly what was done. So long as the contract was, I mean, the, the contract is concerned. Mm. And Jackpa said, look, you want me to testify against an innocent man and jail him. So that what happens? What will you get from it? And sometimes, you see, I weep in this country because there are many innocent people, Lily, in jail because of wrong prosecutions. There are people who maybe may not have a chance of even knowing someone or a chance of even recording someone. Today, you go to jail and you find the innocent ones mixed with people who are actually guilty. And sometimes it's only, it takes only God to save such people. There are people who go to jail, spend seven, 10 years before one day somebody goes back to court to try it. Recently, mm -hmm. lawyer Suzu went back to court Mm -hmm. on somebody's issue, and the person was proven mm -hmm. innocent. Mm -hmm. And many of these cases arise. And so for somebody to be the head of the legal corridors in this country, Minister of Justice and Attorney General, to be engaging in practices of this sort, where you lure people to testify falsely mm -hmm. against innocent men, I thought that, look, he should have been taken out of the office. And we were calling for that. Mm -hmm. Take him out, get a new Attorney General, and let's move on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you are still president. So you'd have to appoint your own new minister for justice. But such a character cannot continue to be attorney general in this country. But thank God, finally justice has been saved. We heard they were heading for the Supreme Court. <laughs> we are waiting. Mm. We know that, look, you can, if you are innocent 100 times, mm -hmm. you would continue to be innocent 100 times. Mm. We've availed ourselves. We've gone to court on a daily basis. There were times they attempted even stopping Atu Fawson from going to parliament and all of that. He said, no, no problem. I'll avail myself. You testify. I know I'm clean. I know I did nothing wrong. 
We follow due process, and what was done was done. Mm. You can decide to terminate anyhow you want to do. But at least the court has ruled. I know the MPP go back, goes about saying, look, we have been attacking the judiciary system, and today because it's in our favor, so we, 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 we are tending to praise them and all of that. No. You see, what is wrong is wrong. Yeah. And sometimes when the obvious is so obvious, you would have no choice than to declare. There was a ruling, 2-1, victory. And the court set aside everything. Said, let's move on. Nothing was done. Mm. We will move on. But wherever they want us to go in this matter, mm -hmm. we would continue to thrive. So kudos to the lawyers of Honorable Atu Fawson and Richard Jagba, Honorable the lawyer Idujita Maklu, and other senior lawyers who took part in the case. Congrats to the Honorable Minority Leader, very distinguished man, highly respected, and the Honorable Kessel Atu Fawson, and Mr. Richard Jagba, who stood his grounds stood in faith and said he wasn't going to do anything that would go against his own conscience. Even when he was promised relief after he had testified against Atu Fawson. When I listened to the tape, I heard Godfrey Dami saying, look, testify against him and you'll be free. You are not a target. He is the target. Why do you make someone a target? To what end? But all these people, their day of reckoning is coming. They will stand the test of the law. In those, I mean, in the right time, many of such people would face the rigors of the law. You cannot, because of your position, decide to abuse other people. I don't like it when people try to use positions and powers to be rude or be abusive towards other people. Look, we are all fair. We are all equal people. We sit to discuss. We are human beings. Let us have compassion. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. If you lie, I'll tell you you lie. If you didn't lie, I'll say you didn't lie. And that is why me, whatever I do, I back it with evidence and the facts. That's what I do. But I will not accuse a wrong man for what he has not done. Why do we do this to each other? Mm. As enough, the same thing, Judge Kwe said, if you remember, took him to court, dragged him. We went back into election. The people said, he's the one we want. Why? There were people who went, who won presidency, to be president even in prison. Uncle Ma is one of them. Nelson Mandela, you remember? There are people who were attacked, vilified, sentenced, what have you. But the people said, this is the person we want, and whatever you do, he is the man we want. So let us continue to use this in advising ourselves. Like I keep saying, me, I like it when I meet young people on panel like this, because we are young people. Mm -hmm. We are growing up. So let us change the narrative. Mm -hmm. Some of the bad things, some of the wrongs that were done by even the senior generation as Gen Zs, let's try to, I mean, work on them so that we don't repeat same mistakes the older generation did. We as young people on this panel need to take a new drive. Let's be fair, let's be just, let's be, I mean, very critical and let us speak the truth and speak with conscience. That is the only way we'll be able to change the fortunes of this country. Other than that, then we are wasting our time as a generation. Mm. And that's all I've been advocating for. So like I said, congrats to the people who won. Okay. Wherever they go, we'll mm -hmm. continue to follow them. But we know that Atto Fawson is innocent. Mr. Richard Jackpa is innocent. Okay. Doc. So I have some 10 minutes, mm. right? Mm. What not 10 to, minutes? Not to take us back. Mm. But my brother... Oh, if you go back... When, when mm. he was responding to the Kotokraba markets, mm. oh. couldn't tell us where the, when and where the funding He's taking was, us back was again. secured. <laughs> this is... It's, it's imperative. Mm. Yeah. And it's we on record going, going that Kotokraba no. market is not Mr. Mohammed's project. Mm. It's Prof. Mills's project. It can even be... It was Prof. Mills's dream. Uh, Lily, it can even be Prof. Mills's project, no problem. Mm -hmm. It's NDC project, mm -hmm. move on. Mm -hmm. It's Prof. Mills's project. Mm -hmm. Mention Kufo's so project. Too. in order... <laughs> oh, you don't, you don't know NHIS. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't know please, NHIS. Please, please, let's move on. We've the, moved the, to a different topic. I mean, you are, are taking us back. You wanted some 30 seconds too. No, but we're discussing a different topic. I've not even done 30 seconds. I've not even done 30 seconds. Let's move on. You said mention Kufo's project. No, no. We can list Kufo's project. No, no, we're not going back. We can list Kufo's project. We're not going back into that. The one Mr. Mahama is trying to steal. No, no, we're not going back into that. We can list them. So, the cover market. Okay, yeah. You have 30 seconds, please. So that we can discuss the other topic. We should stop stealing projects. They sent you, you've done well. We, okay, we should stop on. stealing projects. Malikani, please don't uh, interject. And him. state, Thank state capture. Let's move on. Dr. Baumia has <laughs> not offloaded, <laughs> has not tried offloading 54% of our bauxite mm. reserve to his brother. To call for integrity, once again, <laughs> who is corrupt? The Ghanaian knows who is corrupt mm. and who has integrity. <laughs> on the issue well. of the court case. They brought you what time? In the, so let's go on. In the interests <laughs> of... Um,
the state. Mm. Um, Attorney General has issued a statement mm -hmm. and he's made it clear that he does, he's agrees with the decision of the court. So he will follow due process to seek redress mm. at the Supreme Court to seek to invoke their judicial powers to try and turn the issues. Because he believes that the evidence is there. Mm -hmm. What then health minister and the health ministry, mm -hmm. their position on the ambulances, the supposed ambulances, sorry, because they are not fit to be ambulances. Their, their position on the vehicles and the evidence he had used in court, he believes that he has copious evidence that the courts should consider to make a good determination. So yes, we disagree with the decision of the courts, but we always take inspiration from our leader who believes in the rule of law, mm. other than Kweku Fuado. In 2013, when um, the Supreme Court, in a 5-4 decision, um, ruled in favor of or against his case in court to say that even as much as we disagree, we, we respect the decision of the court. The Attorney General will seek redress. But it's quite interesting that today the NDC is celebrating the judiciary mm. and they believe right is right and wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. After all, whatever the judiciary does, indeed, they are independent mind. And the unanimous SC, the tagging and how we've tried so much to malign the judiciary, how we've tried so much to incite the public against the judiciary. Finally, you've had a ruling in your favor at the Court of Appeal, and we are here singing praises and saying that right is right, wrong is wrong. After all, the judiciary is not biased. That's what it says. After all, the judiciary is not in the pocket of anyone, because indeed, if you believed that people had sworn to put someone behind bars, and the judiciary is in the pocket of the president, I don't think you'd have seen this judgment. Mm. To the extent that a former president who ought to know better and seeks to come and lead us again will go and sit and say that we need to pack the judiciary with the NDC lawyers. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this ruling puts to bed the allegations. So tomorrow, yes, if they come back, yes, if tomorrow they come back yes, and they start attacking the judiciary, it clearly tells their intent. It clearly tells their intent because the three persons yes, that sat on the case mm are persons appointed by the current president. Yes. So if the judiciary was in the pocket of the president mm. and the president appointed those three judges, mm. indeed, we, have, we wouldn't have seen this ruling. So it speaks to people's deliberate attempt to malign the judiciary, especially when they have no case. Mm. You went to court, you claimed the election was rigged, you couldn't adduce a single evidence to that effect. And when you were asked why you were in court, you told the whole world that I wasn't in court because I believe I won any elections. Mm -hmm. yes, you couldn't collate your own re results. Yes, you told your people you had won elections. Mm -hmm. You went to court, disgraced yourself. The only issue that stood out in court was that they believed they were served Milo without biscuits. That's the only reason why they went to court. And the, one of the people that testified on their behalf was trying to plead with the judiciary to ask the EC why the EC did not add biscuit. To, to, to the tea they were served. Clearly, it means when you go to court and you have a strong case and you're able to make your case, it's most likely you'll get good judgment. Mm. But when you go to court and you can't collate your results and you tell your followers that we've won a certain Malik, we've please. won a certain election. We've won talking. a certain elections. Incite your followers mm. and you go to court and you disgrace yourself. Mm. So it's a strong warning and a strong signal mm. to the NDC followers. That's in the end, when they fail you, because they're already failing, mm. they are not giving any better alternative to the people. Mm. They are still touting Koko Buon Kitenkete. And my brother here has justified Koko Buon Kitenkete. I don't know what became of that confirm, but he's still justifying Koko Buon Kitenkete and what not. When you lose mm. and they go to court and they go and disgrace themselves again, mm. don't come and blame any state institution. Mm -hmm. They are fond of it. And their flag bearer has rightly stated that when you are losing the fight, Start attacking the referee. And in the end, when your fears come to pass, you can tell people that, ah, indeed, I told you, the referee is the cause of my defeat. You can see from everything, they started attacking the EC, started attacking the judiciary. But they've gone to court, they've had a favorable judgment, and they believe right is right, mm. wrong is wrong. So when you go back, and after your defeat on December 7th, you go back, and you still don't have a case, 
and you go and sit in court and disgrace yourself, and the court rules against you, don't come and tell and cry foul that there's a unanimous FC somewhere who is against your, your, your progress and who is in the pocket of any leader of the day. But we agree with our Attorney General. I think he should test the law at the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court gives or upholds the decision of the Court of Appeal, so be it. If the Supreme Court believes that indeed there is still some case to answer, then the law will take its full course. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, okay. uh, virtually uh, similar things, like I said. You can keep going. Mm. My problem is usually the taxpayers' money they waste in mm. trying all these things. You know, the PDS scandal mm. that Baumia and co attempted duping this country. It's now in international arbitration. Mm. And every week, the Attorney General uses you and I, our taxes, to fly first class to UK, sit on the case, and come back. It's still in court because we lost over $190 million. We lost $500 million plus when they collected the money and put in PDS account and refused to bring it. It's still seated there. And every week, they use the taxpayers' money to fly and go and sit on the case. So sometimes, these court cases, yes, you can keep going, but it's our taxes, it's our monies. And we cannot keep wasting our monies to a local champion like Godfrey Dame, who would be wasting it anyhow and recklessly spending it. We've had enough. Use the monies to do things for us. We want to see projects. We want to see roads. There are potholes. Look, the motorway is there. They need money to refurbish it. They started working on it. They've abandoned it. Now they are patching the holes with mortar. Cheap, cheap mortar. Look, condemned roads. Abokobi, Terman, condemned road. They've abandoned it. They started. They've stopped. These monies that Godfrey Dami uses in pursuing very unwanted and necessary cases, spending, flying lavishly and enjoying life. But we, 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 we could use them. PDS took us to court. Yes, of course, because of Baumia's corrupt practice. He was the one who changed a condition precedent to a condition subsequent, changed the bank guarantee to an insurance guarantee. This is the mindset of Baumia. Now they've taken us to court. Even the money that they collected in the name of PDS and put in the account, they've not refunded it to ECG. And that's why the state institutions are suffering. So if we have leaders who would come and be thinking of their stomachs and packets and family members and refuse to give us jobs. As young people, let's kick against it. That's all I, what I'm telling Ezekiel to let us do. And I'm happy that he's gradually coming home. Look, let us look at a policy forward country. Let's sit down, let's think, let's draw jaw. As young people, mm -hmm. me, I like to find solutions. Mm -hmm. And President Mahama is a champion in that. He looks at a challenge and he says, look, that's how to solve it. That's how to solve it. He will travel somewhere. He went to Kumasi, he realized that located here was so full, filled with people. He said, no, they needed a market. He started it and he completed it for them. Like I said, he went to Cape Coast. They needed a market, he did it. He came to Sola, he realized that the hospital was overcrowded. He said, you needed a hospital quickly. He built it for them. He went to Tolong, they didn't have a hospital. He said, you need a hospital quickly, he did it for them. Yeah. Went to Bolgatanga, the hospital was so failed. You needed one, he built it. Look, I can imagine, Lily, and you, just one day imagine, if we're still using the old Kotoka International Airport to travel, just imagine. These days, it's not even fit for local flights, not talk of international ones. But President Mahama saw the challenge. He said they needed, we needed to expand it. He used the money to do it. All these projects was only done with 44 billion. Then this government comes. Your very reckless, clueless, visionless, insensitive government comes. They borrow over 780 billion. They have two new oil, one new oil fill, making it three. That rakes in over three billion annually. Esla is on board, rakes in over three billion annually. We left them a sinking fund of 250 billion. Mm. Left them GIF of 270 million, mm. left them the stabilization fund of 250 million, add all these monies, and yet you come and sit here and all you are saying is, we are, we, we are building, we are building. Eight years, my brother Ezekiel, eight years you are telling me you are building, you, I beg your pardon, you are building, you are building. Is, is this how we want to run a country? So, I mean, these are just last touching comments. Okay. okay. Let us. I have not sat anywhere and then we are building. Mm -hmm. just, just, just you said we are fair. constructing I this hospital. I have not done We that. are constructing that. If, if, if I'll, 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 I'll give you the yes. last one minute. So yes. Yes. If, so, if, if, if my brother yes. wants lectures... I've not landed yet. On, okay, okay, yes. land. Then so you're you going to give him the five minutes. You go, you're going no, to give him no, the five no, minutes. No, no, oh, no. Okay. It's two minutes. No, I, it's down two minutes. Yeah, it's two minutes. It was 59 when I went to him. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 59? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll have the half three minutes. No, it's 9-1. So it's two minutes. You came to the north there, and when your own hometown people had a challenge. You know, Lily, they spill the Bagri Dam every year. Mm. By yeah. July, September, they will spill it. Mm. The money that they were going to use to construct the Palugu irrigation dam, mm. they collected $12 million 
and squandered it. If Baumia can do this to his own hometown people, Kurugu, oh, go to Kurugu, the chief nearly wept. He said, look, my son Baumia came and said they were giving us a dam. By August, we have to vacate our houses and go and be sleeping in classrooms because the water will come. You, Baumia, you don't have mercy on people like this. You sit down and let them squander $12 million and you've abandoned the project. He came and cut short for the Debra Inland Port and he also go light around through his teeth that they were going to construct it and when they bring the trains, it will offload goods. He ran and left it. I mean, Baumia has virtually been wicked to we the people of the north. But you see, thank God mm. that we have a savior. We have his excellency, John Dramani Mahama. Okay. A man who has the north at heart, a man who constructed the Fufulso Solar Road, a man who expanded the Tamale Teaching, airport, uh, airport, the Tamale Teaching Hospital, mm. a man who gave us an international airport in Tamale, a man who gave us asphalt, and that man is coming back, and we know what he will do for our sons and daughters of the north. And we will choose that man over Baumia, who we don't know where he got the lying training from, over Baumia, who we don't know where he got the corruption okay. training from, and where his cluelessness and incompetence came from. We will choose your mama 100 mm. times over such a person. Okay. The, 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 the good yeah. people of the North know <laughs> the, definitely the differences they, they, they between brought him today a to corrupt, come try. insensitive, he's tried, he's and tried. a wicked president. Really, we don't allow him to speak. Malik, can, 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 as, can as, as, we as have against to a vice president yeah, whose footprint can be seen <laughs> up there in the North. Mm. For the first time in the history of the North, they've uh, seen an interchange. Ezekiel. The Tamale mm. International Airport was not upgraded hey. to national status under you. In 2016, all you did, all you did, Malik, all please, you please added to the old airport was mm. a one kilometer road. Mm. You've added five kilometer road and a newly built <laughs> airport. Started in 2019, completed in 2021. Mm. Dr. Baumia can't for it. <laughs> Talking of road construction up there, I've told you. Boga to Boko. I've told you. Tamale, the Salah. Roads and all that. I've told you what you've done the lot in terms of road. I've told you the hospitals we built there. Mm. All the things you are saying are things I came to complete. Mm. The solar, Tolon, and all those polyclinics you started. But, eight years. But we started. Eight years. You couldn't finish them. I started. came to finish for the pool in the north. Mm. And I've started <laughs> eight, 28 district hospitals I put the north. How we put the two there? Mm. One that had the vice president and president mm. from the north, and Dr. Baumia, who has only the vice president, the people of the north, they know mm -hmm. who they should trust. Mm. They know. Who brought disgrace to them through that confirmed deal? Yes. They know who brought disgrace to, to them the through the afforestation the project. Palugu. And Dr. Baumia is still committed. Mm. Tell me one solution you've 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 espoused to the people in the north. Dr. Baumia is still committed. And he mentions the Palugu dime everywhere he goes. Mm. And we are happy. Hey. Our footprint in the north, mm. the roads, the <laughs> educational infrastructure, Malik, and the attrition yeah. rate up there. One of the worst attrition rates. Mm in any sector we had was up not. Free education has come. Now we are doing about transition rate of around 98% up not. The people of the north know which of them. One was, who was vice president and the other who was president mm -hmm. and is now coming to promise them. I thought when he was going, he wouldn't travel on the Tamale interchange when they went to Tamale to go and launch their campaign. I thought they wouldn't travel on the Tatale Yendi road. I thought they wouldn't travel on the Boko Bogatanga road. But the roads we've done in the north is what they are going to use to do their campaign. Mm -hmm. The people of the north know mm -hmm. who has served them well. One that got power and brought disgrace to them through that confirmed deal and that forestation deal that never saw the light of day. And one that has become vice president has lobbied and you can see his footprint everywhere, every part of the north. You can see his footprint. And the MPs from this government who have also helped the north. Mm -hmm. We will see in the end what becomes of the North. It's, that's what influenced their panic attack and bars mm. people, 10 buses from every region mm. to go and do their campaign launch up there menu. because Dr. Baumia is in the North and the people are receptive. The crowd are coming out. The individual chiefs and opinion leaders are giving him their blessings. And we know the effect of Dr. Baumia. Mm. You are trying so hard to rope him into your corrupt activities. Dr. Baumia has never been mentioned in any corrupt activity. Mm. You go to the UK House of Commons, your candidate's Charles name is there. Boy. He had taken $40,000 as bribe in the Majaro deal. Students of politics in the UK are reading about Mr. Mahama in UK House of Commons mm. because his name yeah. is in their parliamentary, we are reading about Baumia, yeah. parliamentary hands up. <laughs> as being corrupt, he was influenced <laughs> for our cocoa to okay. be what? Smuggled yeah, out of this country. The Airbus <laughs> issue, Malik, you all know. Yeah, he took yeah. bribe as a, a Ford gift, okay. as, as a bribe. Yeah. We know his okay. corruption <laughs> and corrupt activities. Okay. And you <laughs> want to paint Dr. Baumia so bad. But in the end, when we put both of them out, mm -hmm. and we call all Ghanaians, which of them is corrupt? Mm -hmm. Which of them can you trust with your money? Which of them has integrity? Your guests are good as mine. So okay. the people of Ghana know, one that has been president before, 
and has no solution. Mm -hmm. The one that has, been, has not been president <laughs> and is espousing good and bold ideas that will change the fortunes of this country. And I have no doubt that the good people of Ghana have tasted water and have tasted wine mm -hmm. and they know which to choose. We are going to reject once again the incompetent one. We are going to reject once again the do little one. Okay. We are going to reject once again the one that with, without policies and can't explain their own slogan mm. for the one that has led, that has shown his CV as vice president, has told us a lot he's done mm. in the capacity as vice president, it's espousing good and bold solutions to help us. We can sit here and ridicule the impact of the NPP in the north, but the people are appreciating it. Your chiefs are appreciating it. Which of them brought disgrace to them? And which of them has brought goodies to them? And in the end, on the day of reckoning, we will see who is who over there. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, it was good having you both here. Uh, we, we missed the chief, uh, Bernard Mona, who uh, launched his campaign bid to become uh, president of this. We wish him well. <laughs> you wish him well? Oh, of course. Okay. I mean, PNC. We know he will come and add to the, to the numbers of the candidates up north. Mm. I mean, at least. And everyone will go and show working. Mm. You go and okay. show working. You produce okay. and confirm okay. I produce roads. Okay. Mr. Mona will also come uh, and tell uh, us uh, what, what he wants to do for the plug. Uh, okay, okay. Well, so, yeah. all, all the best I mean, to him. Like I said, Bernard is a very good friend. Mm. He's joining the race. Mm. I mean, you see, the, uh, President Mahama will be president, but mm. all other candidates are better than Elijah Baumia. Like mm. I said, he's entirely clueless. He doesn't understand the, the, the state okay. of, of affairs in this country. So be <laughs> it Bernard, be it who, whatever, mm. they are definitely higher. Mm than a clueless liar like Elijah Bahamia. And President Mahama will ultimately become victorious. But when he does, we will definitely work with the people, others mm. who contested. I know that President Mahama is an all-inclusive person mm. who would want to work with all other presidential candidates. The only one maybe who bring you, nothing, who bring you, nothing. You, you, you know the, the origination of family oh, friends. Oh, can, can okay. I speak? <laughs> you know oh, the only oh, one. Okay, you okay, know the only one. Actually, we're out of time. Thank you very much. Oh, you, 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 you. Know okay. Please, please, please. Um, also after you. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. no. Why not? You, you spoke. He started. I last. spoke. He's gone back to you. You have to speak. No, no. He started. He started. You started. He started. He started. He started. And I spoke. And you don't back to Malik. So it's time you come back to me. I can understand. You said you needed 30 seconds to come back to Malik. No, and I'm And he's done that. He's going ahead. He's going ahead. Yes, I'm I'm going ahead. So, I believe so, you will come I mean, back to me. No, no, we are done. Unfortunately, you are not being fair. No, no, no. Be fair. No, no, no. My, 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 my director will cut me. So, what, what, two seconds. So, you give me two seconds. The clueless. You give me two seconds. Very corrupt. We've tested the incompetent one. And we know his track record. He has nothing better. Let me. Okay. 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 The part of possibility and bold solutions that Abaumia is espousing. If you go back, please, you have to come back to me. No, he was. He was talking. We he didn't allow him back. back. No, you didn't allow him back. Oh, he went back. Let me make my point. Let me make my point. No, you interjected. I went back to you. And I allowed him. Let me make my point. point. So, like I said, uh -huh. I mean, we will not, not, the one who will not do it, that is the one who will bring nothing to the table. Okay. Very okay. clueless. Very and the one who will not go for the one that is. Thank you very much, Malik Basintale is the Deputy National Communications Officer for the NBC. And Dr. Ezekiel Ejikum. I'm always tempted to call you Ejikum here, yeah? Ejikum. Yeah, I'm always tempted to call you. It's actually Obi Ejikum. Oh, my okay. president Kufu is my mentor, so I had ah, to change ah, my name to okay, have a middle okay. name. So, so Dr. Ezekiel Obeya Jekum is a member of the NPP communications team. Thank you very much, gentlemen.